Hey everyone, it's Lauren. Welcome to Furniture Flipping Teacher. It is my first furniture flip in our new shop. If you guys weren't able to follow along last month, Neiman and I had just 30 days to move out of the farmhouse. So be sure to check out that playlist of how we ended up here. And I'm super excited because it's been so long since I've been able to put paint on furniture. So this piece is gonna be my first candidate in our new spot. And I'm excited to be able to carry out my client's vision through this piece. It just was $30 at Goodwill, so I could not pass it up. This video is going to be great for all of you out there that are beginners at spraying your furniture. If you've never tried it before, or if you're just in the beginning steps, definitely be sure to continue watching because I'm gonna go through all of the steps on how to utilize my Home Right Super Finish Max Sprayer. Let's get to it. First things first, as always, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the hardware so that we can make sure to clean underneath it. I'm gonna save it in this little container container so that I can reuse it at the end. This dresser is just a little bit deceiving. It looks like a nine drawer dresser, but it's actually a six drawer dresser. But luckily it has the same storage that a nine drawer dresser might have. Now that I've got all that hardware off, as you may have noticed, the inside drawer liner is just beautiful, but I don't think it's gonna match our, our end result, so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of it. that paper is really in there. It is old and there's actually two layers of it. So I went ahead and used my heat gun and I got one drawer done. It's still a little bit sticky, so I'll probably have to sand it down. I am going to skip to the next step, which is cleaning, and then I'll come back a little bit later and finish um, taking all of that liner out of the drawers. I'm gonna use some simple green to clean this guy down. We need to get all of the dust and dirt off of the surface, as well as all the oils, because we want our paint to adhere to the surface, so cleaning is essential. Simple green is perfect for this because it is a grease cutter, so it's gonna help get those oils off really well. First round of cleaning, and as you can see here, we've got some pretty dirty water, hence why we clean. And now I'm gonna take my other side of the bucket and go ahead and rinse my whole entire piece with some clean water just to get any of that residue that's left over from the cleaner off and then any leftover dirt that I may have missed. finished so next step is to sand all right I've got my surf prep sander out here and then I've got my festool vacuum dust extractor and it's all hooked up so that this will basically suck up all of the dust so that it doesn't create so much dust in the room and I'm also going to be using my RZ mask to just help protect my lungs. If you're interested in either the Surf Prep or the RZ Mask, you can go to their respective websites and I'll link them down below. And you can use code FFT10 for 10% off today. Since I'm just doing a scuff sand, which means I'm just roughening up the surface and then getting out any imperfections, I'm gonna be using a 220 grit sandpaper. So I'm not gonna be, you know, sanding back the finish too much. We're just looking to roughen it up to get some more adhesion with the paint. 
I love this surf prep because you can just Velcro it on and then it has the pre um, cut holes into it so that perfectly lines up and is able to help the vacuum suck up all of the dust that it creates. down the legs a little bit. The Surf Prep website has some foam abrasive pads. And if you don't have a Surf Prep sander, this size three by four, and if you have an orbital sander, they've also got these foam abrasive for sanders like that. So, you know, if you maybe just aren't quite ready to grab a Surf Prep and the whole system, just know that you can also get the foam abrasives in another form on their website. So again, that will be linked down below. And of course, use my code FFT10 for 10% off there. Like I said, I'm gonna do some scuff sanding down here on the legs. This piece is gonna be completely monochromatic. I'm not gonna tell you the color just yet, but just know it's gonna be monochromatic. So that's why I need to also make these legs match this dresser. All right, we are done with sanding now, so it's time to wipe back all that dust. So it's important to wipe back all that dust because you don't want it to clog up any of your paint or anything like that. Now we are gonna go ahead and set this baby up and set up for spraying. As I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna be using the Home Right Super Finish Max Sprayer, and I just wanna thank Home Right for sponsoring this video. And if you didn't know, Home Right is actually a brand that is owned by Wagner. So I'm gonna be setting up my Wagner tent so that I can mitigate the overspray in our new workshop. got one more thing to do before I get to spray here and there's just a little bit of veneer that peeled off here on this front corner and then as well in the back corner so what I'm going to be using is some wood filler bondo this is probably my favorite wood filler just because it's so reliable typically I only have to do one application of it and it's a two-part little epoxy and all it is is you take it out of the can and then it comes with a cream hardener that you just add a little bit to like so and then take your stick i just like to use cardboard because it's disposable take your stick and mix it all together once you have it mixed together though you have to work pretty quickly or else that cream hardener will harden quite quickly. So while we wait for that Bondo to dry, I am going to really quick mask off some of the drawers. And masking off just means that I am going to tape where I don't want any of the paint to go. So if you're a beginner sprayer, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. The first way is the way that I'm going to do it and the way that I've found saves a little bit of time. Either way, there's a lot of prep work with spraying. So what I like to do is leave the, the drawers in the, the dresser and then just tape on the edges here and then also across the top here so that it's not gonna go inside of my drawer either. But then also, since I'm gonna be spraying with my drawers out just a tad bit, it's not gonna get the sides either. The other way that you could do it is you could take the drawers completely out and use tape and plastic and wrap around the entire drawer and do them one at a time. Either way works and it's just a preference thing at one point. Mm -hmm. 
drawers are masked off and ready. So we are gonna go ahead and sand down the Bondo. It's had plenty of time to dry and it's actually very, very hard. So I'm just using that 220 grit that I used originally to sand it smooth and then we get to spray. So let's talk about all of the things that you are going to need in order to successfully spray and safely spray. Of course, you'll need some sort of tent or area that is going to keep the overspray from going all over the place. This is the large Wagner tent. They also do have a smaller version that you can get if you're doing like nightstands, things like that. Um, this is actually very durable. It's super easy to put up probably in about five minutes. I can do it even by myself and I've had this since last summer. So still works like a charm and no worries about all of the paint spray that just comes with the territory. All of these products will be linked down below in the description. So if you're interested in any of them, be sure to check it out down there. Next up, we've got our respirator. So you're gonna need either a respirator like this, which will help with protecting your lungs, or you can use an RZ mask, just like we use for sanding. You could use it also for spraying. This is just gonna keep that fumes from going inside of your lungs. And then again, with some safety, your goggles. Sometimes I do forget to wear these, but this is a great, protection for your eyes. Sometimes that paint goes and sprays, especially if it's a little bit windier. So great idea to have those safety goggles on as well. And then the tape, I already showed you what you might use the tape for to tape off any areas you don't want to be sprayed. You're gonna need a strainer to strain your paint. I harp on this all the time, but this is probably one of the most important parts of spraying because you don't want any chunks in here that will then clog your sprayer when you're spraying. Next, you're gonna need a sprayer. There's so many different types of sprayers out there. I typically use a Wagner Flexio 4000. I recently got a Home Right Super Finish Max, and this I love. It is so easy, and you guys, it is so affordable. It is just around $110, so, if you're you know, not looking for a huge investment, but you're interested in that sprayer, this would be a wonderful option. And I'll show you all of the ins and outs of this specific sprayer. Of course, you're gonna need some paint. Today, I'm gonna be using General Finish's Milk Paint in the color Lamp Black. This is gonna be my first time using it, but I thought that it would be a great try, or I thought that it would be great to try in my sprayer because it's a pretty thin paint, so it should work really well in there. If you have a chalk paint like Dixie Belle or something like that that's a bit thicker, you also might need to thin it out a little bit with some water, but we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Oops. Then with any sprayer, I highly recommend that you read the directions. This is gonna be a lifesaver for you. They, they give you these for a reason, and especially when it comes to testing your sprayer out for the first time and cleaning it out every single time, you definitely want to follow the directions. This sprayer comes with multiple tips. So this bag would be something that you want to get familiar with as well. It's got your cleaning tool and then it's got a few different tips in there for different finishes. And again, we'll go over that in just a minute. And last but not least, I would say that you need a piece of cardboard or a scrap piece of wood or something that you can test out your spray. This is very important just as much as the strainer. Really, all of these pieces together are going to help you get a successful spray even the first time. So let's go ahead and strain our paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and untwist this bottom compartment here. That's where my paint is going to go. Set this part aside. And then the strainer is gonna go right in there 
and you're going to dump your paint in. So for a dresser this size, I typically like to put about 10 ounces of paint in there. This is great because it's got a little um, measurement over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill it to right above that eight ounce mark. Something that you can look at is actually your paint can. That is going to tell you how much you should or how much you can go ahead and thin out the paint. I think this was actually a little bit thicker than I had imagined it to be. It's not horribly thick, but I am going to go ahead and water it down. This tells me that it can be about 5%, but no more than 10% watered down. So that is what I'm going to follow. And I suggest you do the same whenever you are spraying it. The directions are on the can for a reason. I like to use distilled or just um, fresh water, not necessarily from the tap, just to make sure that it doesn't have any of those minerals in there. Depending on how thick your paint is will depend on how quickly it strains through. So while that's straining, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the tips and just the sprayer as a whole. Like I said, check the directions. It'll tell you step-by-step step exactly how to use it. And like I said at the beginning too, there are multiple tips that come with the sprayer. So I have got the green tip, which is the one that it comes loaded with, and that is great for latex paint, chalk paint, and milk paint. So this is milk paint, so that's perfect for the look that I'm going for. It has a one to six inch spray pattern that I can adjust here. And then also it's got a fine finish. So that means that it's gonna be pretty smooth once it dries down. This is the tube that's gonna suck up your paint. So you want it to be facing forward so that when you're spraying like this or like this, it's going to be able to suck that paint up. If it's faced toward the back, you would almost have to spray like this. So definitely make sure that that is facing forward and downward. All of these parts are removable, but you're just gonna make sure that that's screwed on there nice and tight. Also, is this, if this is your first time using the sprayer, it highly recommends that you test it out with water before you test it out with your paint. I've already done that, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip right to the paint. Once you've got your paint strained, you're just gonna go ahead and twist that bottom guy right back on there. Make sure it's nice and tight. Kind of mix that up a little bit. Because remember, I put that water in there. You can also put water in your paint before you strain it all out. I like to do it separately. Now we're just about ready to actually spray, but we need to test our spray pattern to make sure that we like the way that it's going on the cardboard before we actually put it on our dresser. This nozzle right here is going to be adjusting your flow. So if you want more paint to come out, you're gonna push that wheel up toward that plus button. And if you want less of a flow, you're gonna push it down toward that minus button. I would recommend that you start pretty low, maybe not all the way down, but pretty low. And then this is gonna be your trigger button, so that's gonna make your paint come out. You are going to want your, your sprayer to start off the piece on the left edge, and then go, and then you're gonna grab the trigger, and then you're gonna go across your piece and release once you're off of the right edge of your piece. And let me show you what I mean. We're gonna go ahead and plug in. This cord is very short, so you are gonna need an extension cord to plug it in with. This tip right here is going to control where and how your flow goes on your piece. So if it's up and down like this, then that means that you're gonna be moving your sprayer up and down. And if it's side to side like this, that means you're going to be moving your sprayer from side to side. When you're doing this, you want to keep a strong wrist. I'm gonna keep it in the same motion here and the same distance from the actual dresser. If I start to break my wrist like this, 
you're going to get stronger flows on some of the dresser and not on the edges of the dresser. So your goal is to keep it straight across the same distance from the piece as much as you possibly can. So let's go ahead and test it out on my piece of cardboard. Remember, this is essential so that you can test out how you are going to have your spray pattern for your entire piece. So I'm gonna just adjust my flow down a tad bit and see where that takes me. All right, so to me, that's a pretty great flow pattern. I'm not getting any drips. I'm not having too much paint on my cardboard. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a go. Now I'm gonna adjust my tip to go up and down. that it is really that simple i know there's a lot of steps but if you take those steps then it's really not that hard and it's not as intimidating as it may seem so we're gonna let this first coat dry i already absolutely love it and i can just tell that the finish is gonna dry so so smooth that is one of the perks of spraying your paint is that you can just completely eliminate the brush strokes so we'll be back for coat number two here in just a little bit while that first coat is drying, I am gonna work on the hardware because like I said at the beginning, I am gonna be just making this match the dresser and then putting it back on. So I'm gonna clean it off in order to get great adhesion with my spray paint. I'm using Barkeeper's Friend to clean this off and this is just gonna help me get all of that dirt and grime off of the surface. So now I am going to be using just plain old black Rust-Oleum and it is a paint and primer all in one. So I don't need to go ahead and prime it because this is, it's built into this spray paint. And when you're spray painting, just make sure you remember that a little bit goes a long way. You don't wanna hold it on to your piece uh, for too long of a time because that'll cause drips and that's not good for spray paint. So you just wanna apply it nice, short, and sweet. So now these will dry, and then we'll come back with the top coat. Before we spray the second coat, I always suggest that you take a very fine sandpaper or a sanding sponge, and then go ahead and go over that first coat with your sanding sponge just to smooth anything out. You're looking to smooth out any rough patches that may have occurred or any debris that may have gotten stuck on your paint. One thing I wanna reiterate is that even though I didn't mess with any settings on my sprayer, it's still been about an hour of dry time for the paint. So I'm still going to retest my sprayer, make sure that I still like the spray pattern and then adjust it if need be. So I did leave my paint in my sprayer for that hour, but I would not suggest going longer than an hour. Some paints need longer to set in between coats. This one had a dry time of only an hour, so that's why I just waited that long. If you have paint that needs longer than an hour, two, three, four hours, I would highly suggest washing out your sprayer and then just using it again, um, filling it back up with paint when your piece is ready to be recoated.
second coat. Good. I'm gonna let that dry again. We're gonna flip it on its back so that we can grab the legs as well. Time for the top coat on the hardware. I'm just using a matte clear and that way the finish will match the dresser finish as well. It's gonna be all matte. Alrighty, we're finished spraying and I actually checked the general finishes paint I used has a built-in top coat, which I did not know when I bought it. So that's super exciting. So I'm not gonna need to do a top coat, but it is time to go ahead and give this a great wash. All right, so it's time to clean out the sprayer. I actually already went ahead and dumped the remaining paint honestly there was like an ounce or two left i did end up putting a bit more in for the second coat but all in all we only used about half of that can of paint so it had great coverage and with the sprayer it didn't have much overspray which is always a great thing what you are going to do is you're definitely going to make sure you have your instructions right here with you so that you make sure to get every single step um, we don't have a utility sink here, so I'm going to be using a hose. <laughs> Neven's going to help me out a little bit because it is a little bit of a struggle, but we got this. Okay. And it's a bit windy too. Okay, go ahead and fill this. So once I dumped my paint out in back into the container, now I filled this part with water so that I can go ahead and rinse out. So I'm giving it a good shake here. One important part is you don't wanna get water in this contraption. This is where the air goes round and round and round. That's the actual part that makes it work, the motor. So don't get water up in there, but just make sure you get all of the paint out of this part of the contraption. If you don't have uh, outdoor electric, then you're just gonna want an extension cord because you're going to want to rinse out your sprayer by basically making the water go through it. Now we're gonna dump that black water out and we're going to fill with more water and this time we're gonna put some Dawn dish soap in there to continue cleaning that paint out. Day three of our project, I got my sprayer all cleaned out and I think this is probably one of the main parts that scares people away from using a paint sprayer is the cleanup. And honestly, it, it got into my head too that it was the most difficult part of using the sprayer. But after really diving into those directions like I keep on harping on, it really isn't that difficult to do. The main important thing that you do when you're cleaning it is to reattach the container full of warm soapy water and spray that trigger until clean water comes out. That way you can ensure that all of your inside mechanisms and tubings are cleaned out and that that paint won't dry in there and basically become a glue then prohibiting your paint to come through on the next time you use it. I was so worried about getting water up there and once I just got it through my head that I didn't need to tip it upside down and get it through all these tubes but that that other way would help it go all the way through, that really relieved a lot of my unsuredness of cleaning out my sprayer. So don't be scared, take it step by step, and really it's not that difficult. You might have noticed that we are inside now and that's for a couple of reasons, but the main one being that out in our new shop, we just haven't quite gotten the time to build up a staging wall. So we came inside and this is the best wall in our house that we are able to stage the furniture for photos. So again, just want to encourage you 
that even if you don't have that staging wall, look around your own house and figure out where you can stage your pieces. It can be a little bit of a pain getting it in the house and things like that, but it is worth it to get those awesome pictures. The only things that I've got left to do really are taking off the tape that I taped onto the drawers, removing, or no, sorry, installing the hardware, and then doing a few touch-ups that happened when I probably slid the drawers in a little bit too soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that tape. It's hardware time. And there we have it, you guys. This is the very first piece refinished in our new home. And I hope that this video was a testament of how simple using a sprayer can be, as well as how quick it can be to use the sprayer. Once you've got all those kinks worked out and you're not overthinking it anymore, it is truly one of the quickest ways to refinish furniture, as well as look at the amazing finish. There are no brush stroke marks, so if you've asked me before or asked yourself, how do I eliminate the brush stroke marks? This is like number one answer. If you are interested in checking out a sprayer, I will link both the Home Right Super Finish Max down below, as well as the other one that I use, the Wagner. Remember, Wagner owns Home Right, so it's basically the same brand. There's just a few differences in the sprayers, and you can see that sort of by the way that they look. So I'll link all those below, and you can find all of them in, on Amazon, as well as the, the tent, and that is really great, like I said at the beginning, for overspray. So if you just have a garage or maybe you can just do it outside in your driveway, that large tent is perfect for anything, probably no bigger than a dresser about this size, um, just to continue to help with that overspray so you don't get it on your car or your house or anything in your garage area. I've never done a monochromatic piece where literally every single thing is the same color, but I'm digging it with the black. I think that the hardware, as well as the legs being black to match the rest of it, it really works. So I'm excited to see my client's reaction when she sees it. She's She's been waiting for so long just because, you know, we've moved and things like that. And right now I'm at about a six to 10 week turnaround time just with things that we've got going on as well as other pieces that I've got planned for other customers. And that is totally okay as long as you're upfront with your clients about the turnaround time. I've been in contact with her throughout the entire time. Um, she gave me a deposit back at the end of February. And so we're just nearing that 10 week mark and I'm so excited to be able to have this finished piece for her and for it to have come out this amazing. Speaking of so much going on around here, we have moved into this house and upstairs we are gonna be renovating an entire Airbnb area. It's got a kitchen, a bathroom, a bedroom, and a sunroom. So if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to get subscribed and we're gonna be taking you guys along on our journey of revamping that Airbnb. And so from now on, instead of all of my money going toward my student loan debts like this originally started with, all of the profits for my furniture are now going to be going toward renovating that Airbnb. We're gonna be you know, spending that money as we go, but everything will be, everything made from my furniture will be going toward kind of rejuvenating that money that we're putting into the Airbnb. So be sure to get subscribed and let's talk about that profit that I am earning and the first amount that's going to go toward those renovations. So after grabbing this piece from Goodwill for just $30 and you know, the 
the paint was $20, but I only used half of it. So let's call it 10. And so 10 plus 30, that's $40 in materials. Plus that can of spray paint will give it $5, $45 in. I am charging my client $500 for this piece. So that is going to give me a total profit of $455 and that is going straight toward our Airbnb renovations. Say that with me. That's going straight toward our Airbnb renovations. And we hope that you guys tag along. Thanks so much for sticking around for this kind of longer video. I hope that this inspires the idea for you if you are working on paying down your student loan debt or making updates to your house or so many other possibilities that furniture and flipping it and selling it is a great opportunity and a way to be creative but still earn that little extra side income. Thanks so much to HomeRight for sponsoring this video again and thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the flip side.